In this video, we're going to be studying pre-measures. As a motivation for studying pre-measures, let's do a quick summary of what we have so far in this reproduction list. In the last couple of videos, we talked about outer measures and how we could get measures from outer measures. The problem was measures were too complicated and we found a way that defining a, an outer measure mu star, we would then restrict this outer measure to a sigma algebra m of mu star measurable sets and then this restriction would be a measure, actually a complete measure, mu. But there's a problem with this. We have an outer measure and an outer measure is defined over parts of x. And then we have to restrict this function to the mu star measurable sets. But if I ask you, given any set, is this set mu star measurable? Then you would have to calculate the formula of mu star measurable, the definition, for each set E in parts of X, comparing it with the set I gave you. Now that's a very complicated definition. And so when you want to define the sigma algebra, it's very complicated because you have no idea which sets are actually mu star measurable. We actually let go so many of the properties that measures had, just to not complicate things, that we lost almost every intuition we had about our sets. So pre-measures come to save us in this situation. We are kind of lost when we're given an outer measure, so pre-measures are sort of in the middle. They're not as complicated as measures, but they're also not as easy as outer measures. So let's actually define pre-measures, and for this we'll first need to define an algebra. So we have a subset of parts of x. And we say that this set A is an algebra if it satisfies these two properties. The first one says that we have a set A in the algebra, then its complement is also in the set. So this is telling us that algebras are closed by complementation. And the second property says we have a finite sequence of elements in our algebra, then the union is also in our algebra. And here is very important that this sequence is finite. So what this property says is that algebras are closed under finite unions. And this is the difference between algebras and sigma algebras. For sigma algebras, we were asking they to be closed under countable unions. Algebras are weaker in this sense. We only need finite unions to have an algebra. So they are therefore less powerful. And now that we know what an algebra is, we can finally define a pre-measure. Remember that measures were defined on sigma algebras. Also measures were super weak and they were defined over parts of x. And now pre-measures are, as I said, in the middle between outer measures and measures. They are defined over algebras. So we have an algebra A and a function mu sub zero that goes from the algebra to the zero infinity will be a pre-measure if these two things satisfy. The empty set measure zero, this is the usual one. And the second one is a bit complicated, but don't be scared. It says the following. You have a countable sequence of elements in the algebra. So this is more than finite, this is countable. So we don't know if the union is in the algebra, because we know that whenever we grab finite amount of elements in the algebra, their union is in the algebra. For a countable union, we don't know. If it's finite, then yes. But if it's not finite, then it could not be in the sigma algebra. But every time we grab a countable sequence of sets in the sigma algebra, for which the union is in the sigma algebra, so this is also a hypothesis, because it may not be satisfied, then the pre-measure is additive, so the pre-measure of the union is equal to the sum of the pre-measures. But I want to emphasize this very important property. The second property of a function being a pre-measure says if we grab a countable sequence for which the union is in the sigma algebra, then the pre-measure is additive. Because if the countable union is not in the sigma algebra, then we don't even have the right to write this. Because mu sub zero of the union 
what we need the union to be in our domain, that is, in the algebra. So it's very important that here the hypotheses are whenever you grab a sequence for which the union is in the sigma algebra, then your pre-measure is additive. But now if you go back a few videos to the one where we learned how to get outer measures, then we were defining a function rho that satisfied certain properties. We can see very easily that any pre-measure satisfies those properties. So we can replace that function rho with a pre-measure and get another measure. So go back to that video if you haven't seen it yet. And if you have, then you know that the function mu star of a for a in parts of x, we can define an outer measure as the infimum over the sum from i equals 1 up to infinity of mu sub 0 here in the previous video it said rho of a sub j where a sub j's are elements in the algebra where mu sub 0 is defined such that a is covered by this union. So what we can do is we have any set in parts of x. We find a cover by elements in our algebra of a and then calculate and then calculate the sum of the pre-measures of the elements in that cover. Now if you saw that video I just mentioned then you know that this mu star is an outer measure. So now we found a way of obtaining outer measures from pre-measures and we already know how to obtain measures from outer measures. The problem is still what are the mu star measurable sets for the mu star outer measure defined this way? This is a very important question because once we know which sets are the mu star measurable then we know we can restrict this measure to this sigma algebra m and get a measure. Well, it turns out, we will see in the next video, but it turns out that the mu star measurable sets are very simple, very easy to calculate for mu star outer measures defined from pre-measures. We will see more about this in the next video.